Hello, I'm glad you joined me today. This is DIY Cooking with Connie. And uh, before I get started here, you know, uh, on our channel that we're trying to promote, we're just kind of getting started, so we're new at this. I would like for you to look at it and the video. And when you do look at it, be sure and give us a thumbs up. And right down below that, is a little bell. If you would click on that, you would be notified every time we make a video. And I would appreciate a comment. Where you live, what the weather is there, just let me know that you are listening. Uh, here in Missouri, now we're having frigid weather. Uh, it's in the teens high and it's down in the single digits at night. The night they said probably a wind chill about 20 below. So it is extremely cold. We're not used to that. Usually uh, we have uh, temperatures that runs like in the 30 to 35 degrees and then might drop down to 20s at nighttime. But then we have more sunshine. Now since January, we have had very few days of sunshine. It's been cloudy and gloomy. And of course that's depressing, you know. And uh, I think people uh, have a tendency to kind of put off doing anything because they are depressed all this cloudiness. You know, you've got to get up and keep yourself busy, make the day go by. And, but uh, I, I enjoy doing a lot of things here at the house. And one thing in particular that I enjoy is watching my birds. And uh, I take care of those. I feed them. I put out several feeders and I buy my uh, feed I use hen scratch a lot of people use nothing but bird seed but I use hen scratch I go to my local feed store and they're so friendly they get to know you you know and and we talk about a little bit of everything but I can get a 40 pound bag of hen scratch for $12 and uh, that goes a long ways Yep. Mom, who's your local feed store here? Well, my local feed store is Henley Supply uh, Farm, Farm Supplies. And uh, they're just, oh, probably no more than, I'd say, uh, five miles out of town. And so I go out, they load it up for me. And then I have to wait for one of the kids to come here to unload it because I can't lift 40 pounds anymore. I'm getting weak, I guess. But of course, you know, I'm 74 years old. And I don't do like I used to do. But uh, back to feeding the birds. I also put out soot for the birds. Soot is good for put oil in the birds' feathers. And what that does, it keeps the birds warm. And I've noticed here, a lot of the birds, since it is so cold, it is 17 today, that they'll squat down, cover their feet, and put their head underneath their wing to warm up. I wish I could heat the whole outside for them, but I can't. And uh, the, the uh, soot is, uh, what I use is, I uh, use bottom soot. And then I also get the beef fat from my local uh, grocery store, which is town and country. And uh, it costs very few pennies to get it. And I keep that out for them too. I have had a number of birds here. I mean, here in Missouri, we have quite a few different kind of birds. I have uh, the red belly woodpecker. He's beautiful. I also have the downy woodpecker, which is a very small woodpecker. And then I have the hairy woodpecker that's kind of in between the red belly and the downy woodpecker. I also have the wood, uh, the, excuse me. I also have the pleated woodpecker, which is about the size of a chicken. And he enjoys the soot also. I have uh, the uh, cardinals that comes in, I have the blue jays, I have the wrens, I have the sparrows, I have the white crown sparrows, if you've never seen one, they're beautiful, and then I also have the starlings, which I'd rather not have, but they got to eat too, and then I feed my squirrels, I feed out whole corn, I get those, that from Henley's Farm Supplies, and uh, that feeds the squirrels, that feeds the crows, they come in every day. I've even had turkeys to come up in the yard. And uh, then at any time, we have uh, several deers in the area. 
and they come up and kind of clean up what's left. So the next day I'm bowed out there doing it again. But then I also have a heated bird bath. Since water is so scarce right now because the ponds are all froze, I put water out for them every day. It's heated. They even get in it and take a bath. Here it is, 17 degrees, and they're out there taking a bath. I would freeze to death. But they seem to like that. So I keep it out there for them to drink and to bathe in. I also would like to talk to you about uh, watching my videos. <coughs> Excuse me. You're getting dry. Uh, Mom, didn't you, before you go into that, didn't you also make some homemade soot this yeah, week? Yeah, I made homemade soot. Yeah, how do you usually make your homemade soot? way I do here, I take a, a, small, a small can of Crisco, it's what I use, and I melt that uh, in my pot, and then I keep, I, I have a small can, a small jar of peanut butter. I take it all out, I put it in there, melt it down. And then I add uh, a cup of cornmeal to that. I use the uh, rough cut cornmeal. I like it better than the fine stuff. I also, uh, I put some oats in it. I used a cup of oats in it. And then I also used two cups of uh, bird seed in that. And uh, then I add raisins and I add nuts. I mix this all up. And then I take a cakey, uh, no, a cake pan, <laughs> a, a cakey, cakey pan, <laughs> a cake pan, and then I line it with wax paper and pour that into it. And of course, this time when I did it, I just set it outside, 17 degrees. It don't take long to harden. I bring it in. I cut it into my squares. I've got little cheap Ziploc bags, and I stick it down in there. And stick it in my freezer so I can go there and grab it fill the feeders it's easy to make and uh, if you've got I mean it don't have to be raisins it can be uh, cranberries or any kind of dried fruit as long as you chop it up where they can you know eat it and uh, that's the way I do my soot and uh, I wouldn't know if it I probably not any cheaper than what you could buy but I enjoy doing it well, and it's also good if you have, like, if you have some oats that are, you know, about to expire, or maybe you've got some cereal or, you know, some raisins that have gotten old or some nuts, there's, you use whatever you happen to have and just exactly. make it however each, yeah, each time. Yeah, there's no certain recipe for it. I mean, you don't want it where you can't stir it in the pan. You want it where you can pour it out. And, uh, you know, you can add more shortening if you want to make a bigger batch, more peanut butter. I like the crunchy peanut butter because you got your nuts already in it. But I happen to have a, a bag of peanuts here that was getting old. So I kind of chop them up and I throw it in. I mean, they appreciate anything they can get. And I, I sit there maybe for hours watching the birds. The they fight over all the stuff, you know, and, uh, but it just, they get right up close to you where you can see them and the way they react. It's just uh, very pleasing to me. And what do you do, Mom, to keep the squirrels? Because I know you feed the squirrels too, but what do you keep, do, do what do you do <laughs> to keep the squirrels out of all the bird feed? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I take and I get me a nice row of tinfoil and what I've got them hanging by, I wrap it all the way up to the top with tinfoil. Squirrels don't care for tinfoil. And I get tickled. They'll come down that pole to get to it, and they touch that, that tinfoil in. I mean, they're gone. So uh, tinfoil works. It's on the short feeder or long feeder. I hang mine from the trees out here. And uh, so far, no squirrels. Only place squirrels are is where I want them to be. And that's in the back and on the ground. I do have a feeder back here that is a metal feeder that when they put their weight on it, it shuts off the feed automatically. And uh, they have tried every way to get into that. I don't want them in it. And they haven't figured out how to get in it. Unless they're a little bitty light squirrel <laughs> that's just been born. It's the only way they could get it. But uh, 
I keep uh, flat bed feeders out. That's good for cardinals and so forth. Uh, and, but uh, I also put feed on the ground because we have a lot of ground feeders that won't go to a feeder. And uh, they enjoy it too. It just, uh, you know, anything you can do to preserve our wildlife is, is something that I think is great because they're important to our system. And uh, if we don't take care of them this time of year, most time they can self-sufficient. But this time of year, the food is scarce. So if you can get out there and put out a little feed for them, I don't care if you got in the house there, you got some old cereal, just, just take it and put it in a bag and mash it up and throw it out to them. You know, anything like that. Bread is not the best stuff to put out there. But uh, if you've got old stale bread, toast it or whatever, break it up where they can eat it. Big piece, they can't handle that. Yeah, and if just... you've got some old fruit cakes laying around, <laughs> that's perfect. Get rid of them fruit cakes. Yeah. yeah, just not something with a whole bunch of preservatives or additives. You don't want something like that. They don't need it. And, uh, of course, we don't either. But I think I've ate enough preserved stuff that I'll last around here for a lot of years. Because uh, anything you get a hold of anymore has got preservatives in it. It's hard to get something that's all natural. You can go to your fruit, bananas, and stuff like that. That's about it. But uh, I appreciate you watching me today. And uh, please comment on my uh, channel and let me know how you like the the uh, the uh, videos. videos that we're doing. And if you don't like me, that's all right. I, I've <laughs> been around long enough. You know, that doesn't bother me. You like me or you don't. I am what I am all the time. So, uh, I would appreciate you. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and a comment and hit that little bell below it. And, uh, and subscribe. You're looking and for... subscribe to us. Subscribe, it. yeah. yeah. subscribe to <laughs> us. I, I tell you, I, I speak hillbilly. <laughs> I don't speak a whole lot of English really good. You know, I know uh, I was working in St. Louis and... The, they asked me, said, are you from uh, uh, the uh, uh, are you from the hills? And I said, well, I'm from South Missouri. <laughs> but of course, I'm not. I'm from Central Missouri. And, uh, but uh, I got that kind of that slang, and that's the way it is. I went to Iberry School, so what more can you expect? But have a nice day, and please come back and join us again. And mom, if they don't know, when they subscribe to your channel, if you can grow it, especially to get over a hundred subscribers, and we can watch so many, we can let, we can log so many minutes of people watching, then you'll be able to get your own YouTube address. Oh, boy, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> and then it's easy for us to direct people to your channel a little easier. Right now, we can only direct them to certain videos. And the other thing is, is if you can keep building it, then you can also, you'll be able to start telling them, like if you have certain products you like to use, things like that, you'll be able to start showing them some of that where yeah, right I now got, you're restricted with YouTube. Yeah, and, but I've got a lot of hints that I've got. And I'll tell you just a real quick hint that when you're cooking something on the stove, potatoes, whatever, don't want it to boil over, lay a wooden spoon across the top of your pan. It won't boil past that. And uh, it works. And uh, so little things like that that uh, might help a beginner or might help even an old cook like me. You know, it took me a while to pick up all these. Of course, I've got over 300 recipe books, and I've read every one of them. I enjoy them. I enjoy them. So I, I try to get the old cookbooks. You know, uh, I've got one cookbook. It says, weight measures is they want to take a half of an eggshell, fill it with milk. That's the way they measured. Or they want to use a hunk of butter the size of a hen egg. And, you know, they didn't have measuring cups and stuff like that. So that's the kind of books I really enjoy. But I read them all. I've got anything you can think. I even got Aunt B's cookbook on Andy Griffith's show. So, you know, stuff like that. I'm from the old school. The technician here is my daughter, Claudia Hurd. 
which really is not a very and good technician. It's it's a non-paying. Yeah, non-paying. It's non-paying, and she pretty much gets what she pays for yeah. because I don't really know what I'm doing. But we are learning. We got a new new lighting today. We did get new lighting today, and so that I think is going to help us. And then um, we are learning to do some editing, and um, she's learning to do some. Editing. I'm I'm learning to do some editing and a few things in between everything else that goes on in our lives uh, I'm trying to learn some things too so um, anyway like she said we are what we are we're nothing different than no. I mean that's what we are so I how old school I am I got a flip phone you know and uh, the kids keep saying oh mom you need an update you know I just need to say hello goodbye <laughs> and that's about it so please please join us we enjoy uh, doing this for you, and we enjoy you watching. So thank you very much.